one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. Sunrise Dance Company, these are the Truckee Graphite dancers right here. We're going to do a song for, for you called Lift Him Up.
test it, go test. I'm testing, testing. Oh, it works. Okay, you ready for this? Give a hand for the Twinkies. Here they come. He spoke to your heart, but you didn't listen. And he said he loved you, but you walked away, and you said things that weren't very nice. I just wanted to share a little bit with you guys. Uh, for the past four years, I've been addicted to about everything you can think of, just about everything. Um, and the last year or so, I've been, I was addicted to crystal meth, and it destroyed me. <laughs> it was eating away at me. Nothing in this world, nothing that you can get, nothing, no money, no guy, no nothing is worth it. I was addicted. Um, when I called them, I had been up for three days. Uh, um, longest I ever been up was five days. I was wasting away, you know, just so spackled <laughs> out of my mind. And, you know, everything was going through my mind. And I knew God. I knew the truth. And I turned away from God. It was like I was smacking him in the face every time. Every time I betrayed him. I defiled him. I was disgusting in his sight. Wow disgusting in his sight and he turned around and showed me grace and mercy with overflowing abundance wow <laughs> so um nothing that i could say is gonna get you guys but right here this is uh, this is my foundation <laughs> this is what is going to get me through and make my life stronger so i wanted to share a verse with you guys and it kind of it really relates to my situation, what, what happened and how God delivered me. So just wanted you guys to listen up real quick. Fools, it is, um, that's not the beginning. <laughs> that's the first, I swear. <laughs> um, Psalms 107, verse 17. It goes, fools, because of their rebellious way and because of their iniquities were afflicted, their souls abhorred all kinds of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord, and in their trouble he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness, for his wonders to the sons of men. Let them also offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his works with joyful singing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there we go. Um, when they picked me up, I was about... Uh, 10 pounds lighter or so, but I, my ribs were showing. I was dying, decaying from the inside, disgusting. Wow, I saw my friends picking at their faces. They're all dying, all of them. Wow, God. And I just fell on my face one day, fell on my face to God, knowing him, knowing his grace, knowing his mercy. And he poured it out on me and is still continuing to pour his grace and mercy out on me. He will do the same for you if you know him truly, truly. Amen. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you, Katie. Maybe just a, a little warning to you of what can happen to you when you're walking with the Lord. If you don't stay solid in the Lord, you don't stay in the word of God. Uh, you can go down that path. Any one of us can. And some of you may not be in the right place. It may be the beginning of that because she started out with just a little rebellion. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
told a lot of what I was going to share. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. And I get another thing. So when, I was a, when I was your age and I get in trouble, my mom would send me off with these guys. But I had, a, I had a good time. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me like this? No. Yeah. No. All right. Um, so yeah, when I was nine, I was at a concert just like this, and my uncle gave an invitation, and I just felt this burning in my heart, like, yeah, I want to go to heaven, I want to be with Jesus. My mom was sitting next to me, and she didn't raise her hand, but I, I did, and I was like, yeah, something's different. They gave me a Bible, I took it home, read it for about ten minutes, put it down, and I didn't see it ever again. You know, like they said, I didn't, my mom's not a Christian, and I had no influence and ever since I was a young guy, I, like, I, was, I was real mischievous. I liked adventures, pirates, and, and ninjas, and skateboarding. And I was always, I, I liked the, the, the fun. So I started out sneaking out at night and, you know, running around, getting a little mischievous trouble, knocking on people's doors and running away. But, you know, as you get older, you gotta, you gotta change. You gotta get into bigger, better things. You don't read kids' books all your lives. And so uh, I started dabbling in that, you know, in the, the darker stuff, the drugs and just bad stuff. And it came to a point where I was in school one day and this detective comes in. He says, hey, I need to talk to you really quick. I was like, oh, what? So I went into this office and he started getting on me, you know. I started just lying about everything. He's like, blah, 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 playing the tough guy image like on TV. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going to jail. So he puts me in a car and we start going to Wittenberg and he looks at me and says, hey, that whole, all that stuff I said to you back there, that's, that's who I am, I'm a cop, I have to do that. But the only thing that's gonna change you, this jail that I'm taking you isn't gonna change you, but Jesus Christ is gonna change you. And I was like, you're just like them. <laughs> oh no. So I go to jail and I'm the tough guy. You know, I, I thought the, the worse I was, the, the better things I did, the cooler I was. Straight lie. I was like, all right, now I'm really cool. I'm in jail. Can't go to the bathroom when I want. And yeah, woohoo! <laughs> so it got to the point where I was sitting at lunch one day, and my probation officer comes behind me and he says, Hey, your uncle from Lake Tahoe wants to see if you can go stay with him. And I'm at lunch, surrounded by tough guys. I go, Oh no. Church. Don't make me go to church. And I was like, Nah, I don't want to go. I go back into my cell. And I was telling my roommate this, cellmate, whatever. And he goes, dude, you're crazy. Go to Lake Tahoe. You know, there's girls up there and stuff. He's like, yeah, true. All right. So things started working out, and I thought I was kind of in control of the situation. I was like, yeah, I'm manipulating the system. I'm going to go up there and do my time and whatever. And as I was up there, my uncle started telling me things that were in the Bible that I never heard. And it sounded kind of weird at first, but it was it, it all made sense. He talked about the spiritual battle I was in and, and the fact that I did give my heart to Jesus and now he's not going to let me go. I'm his. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, that, that, that does sound pretty cool. And as I was up there, a lot of my old friends started, things started to happen in their lives. A couple of them started going to jail for a long time, long periods of time. A couple of <coughs> them started dying. And I was like, you know what? That lifestyle I was living is... That's where it leads, it's just empty. Being cool isn't worth it sometimes. I had a buddy that was pretty much my best friend and maybe three months after I was living with him, he ended up getting a car wreck and the kid that was sitting in the passenger seat died. And I was always that kid in the passenger seat. So I kind of thought about it, I was like, you know what? I think God is doing something in my life. He is saving me from something. So the time goes by and Jesus just becomes more real and more real in my life. And uh. Now, just to speed it up a little bit, I'm 23, and God gave me this beautiful wife, and he sent me on this adventure that's just mind-blowing. I live in Minnesota. Does anybody know where that is? <laughs> I didn't. I just knew the Vikings played there, and she was in the Coast Guard, and we had an option to go to Alaska or Minnesota and a couple other places. And I was like, let's go to Minnesota. You know, Vikings, this and that. Minnesota's up north. And up north it is old. So, what's going on here? And now, uh, we're missionaries up there. I mean, not like official, but that's how I see it. And God's using us in just these crazy ways. I get to minister to these people that have gone down all these different paths from drugs to gangs to just skateboarding. I know this, I hang out with this guy lately. He was a hardcore skater and just got into the whole dope scene too. And he ended up doing some crazy trick and cracking his head open. He was in a coma for a long time. And now he's on fire for Jesus. I get to hang out with that kid and be like, yeah, yeah, let's go.
go to prisons and tell people about this and stuff. So that's my life in a nutshell. Um, I wanted to, I got a couple messages for, for all you guys. I'm sure you fall in one of the categories. Um, my first message is just for those of you that are, you know, real on fire for the Lord. <laughs> and you uh, maybe have grown up with them or your parents raised you in the ways. Um, I just say, think eternal, you know. I mean, we're only going to be here for a short time. And don't let that fire get quenched by the world. Like, being cool or the music, music tends to take us off in random trails. And just stay where you are, man. Stay on fire. Stay in the word. Even if the world laughs at you and says, ah, you guys are geeks, ignore me. Um, to you that are kind of, you know, not so radical about it, but you know you're saved. There's a verse that scares me sometimes when I read it. It talks to Jesus says, though you're not hot or cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. And I don't know what exactly what he means by that, but I just think, oh, you know, I don't want to be Jesus puke. I don't want to be lukewarm. <laughs> So just get, get back in the hot zone, because being cold ain't no fun. Katie shared a little bit about what it's like being cold. And it's no fun. And to you that are, maybe you're not safe. Maybe you just grown up in this. Your parents are Jesus freaks, kind of like these guys. and It's just all you've known your whole life. Um, and God is so real. Ask him to, to prove himself to you, and he will. I have a little sister who goes to uh, Galena High, and one of her classmates just died in a car wreck like on Monday. And she's torn up, man. And I'd like to tell you, you know, that you guys are young and you have your whole life in front of you. But you don't. I mean, tomorrow isn't guaranteed like that little girl. Jamie was her name. I mean, she had the world in front of her. I guess she was active in sports and everything, but pff, she's gone. So we got to take the time we have now. And it says in the Bible that today is the day of salvation. So just, I mean, get out of that iffy zone and give your life to the Lord if you haven't already. Make sure you have. Rock on. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. Here's a song.